Continuing the runway series, I want today for it to feel like the faith in you is being stirred, like those engines rev as a plane gains the momentum and takes off. I want to set the foundation from Hebrews 11. It is a chapter on faith. Faith is our focus today. And it says in this chapter, verse 6, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. A couple of thoughts there is that God is real. Our faith is not in a fable. Our faith is in God and God is real. God is real and God is responsive. He will reward those who approach him, who seek him in faith. And it's very clear that we can't even please him without faith. Faith is foundational. Faith is essential. Faith is simply believing that God exists, he is real, and that his word is true. So when you put your faith in God and in his word, you are exercising your faith and your faith gets stronger. And because you have faith in God, you experience that work of God to take you higher, next level, for you to soar, like Isaiah says, on wings of an eagle. I want to stir that faith in you today. But if you say, I'm going through such a hard time, I don't, I don't know if I have any faith. And if I have any faith, it's so weak because I've done everything I know to do to express faith and things aren't changing. Faith is not only a muscle, it is a gift. It is a grace. And God will grace you with the deposit of fresh faith today. So everybody is included in this message one for inspiration, one for hope and encouragement. I don't think any of us leave here like we came. And so here's, here's my point today. Faith is the force that moves you forward. And so I'm gonna make a series of statements and, and I want them to, to catch within your heart and within this room, like the power of those engines picking up the momentum as the plane takes off. So I'll, I will read these statements. I'm gonna ask you to read it with me. Here's number one. What has been in my life is not going to determine what will be in my life. Say it with me. What has been in my life will not determine what will be in my life. Everybody has some has been, but it will not determine what God is going to do because God is greater than the past. Therefore, the past is not your future. Faith in God moves you forward. Okay, let, let, let's just keep gaining momentum. Here's number two. My past failures will not define my future. Mm. Failure can seem so final. Failure can be defining. And I want to speak specifically to somebody today. You're, you're experiencing the impact of failure. And it seems like right now that this will fix you in a place of defeat. This will push pause on the dreams and the purposes of God. There may be a lot to work through, to pray through, to sort through, but I am telling you that failure is not final. I want you to get that in your heart. Therefore, that past failure, it can't define your future. So many times when we fail, it's, it seems like there's like a monument. We were just in Washington, D.C., seeing some of the great memorials and monuments. Those are speaking of great exploits and great leadership. Failure can be like a monument reminding us of some of our worst decisions. And, and we circle that and we circle back to it. Failure is a moment. It is not a monument. 
It did happen. But because of God's grace and power, it's not final. Matter of fact, you can even fail forward because from the failure, you learn and you grow. I'll be the first to step up. Maybe you would affirm it with an amen that, that I've learned so much through failure. A, a word to parents. Uh, I, I, I heard this mantra along the way where people say, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? My parents came along and said, I want to teach you what you can do knowing you will fail. You're not going to bat a thousand every time. And they taught me that it's not final. So then I could learn from it. I could grow. I could get knocked down and by the grace of God, get back up. Because it doesn't define the future. Here's three. Keep going. My disappointments will not rob me of my God-desired destiny. If we're not careful, disappointments will place this restriction on us like gravity. If we apply faith, it's like the principles of aerodynamics and we, we press through and go ahead and soar into the future. The gravity, the weight of disappointment that would cause us to be stuck, cause us to be stopped in our growth, in, in our thriving and flourishing. Faith is a force that will move you forward. Joseph received a dream from God. His brothers throw him in a pit. They then sell him into slavery. He is then placed in Potiphar's home where Potiphar's wife falsely accuses him and it results with him being thrown in prison. It is 13 years from the time he gets the dream until he's prime minister. Disappointment after disappointment. But we see in his life, his faith in God was so forceful that it kept moving him forward. And it's not that our faith has strength, it's our faith is placed in God and God has strength. My faith is not in my faith, my faith is in God and therefore my faith has the force to move me forward and it doesn't allow disappointment to rob me of my God-desired destiny. I believe somebody here, you, you have felt stuck, but that's making its way to your spirit. And you will start hoping again and, and, and you, you will start experiencing energy and momentum and your life is going to take off. The runway is that of faith and you will go into what God has for you. The next one, my past pain is not going to restrict the development of my potential. I love this. Mighty Oaks is a ministry that helps veterans and first responders. We just had a week of ministry called Legacy where these men are invited and they bring their brokenness, their pain, their problems, and all of them seem to have them stuck, confined, isolated in that defeat. This man who came from Lawton gave his story. He's a police officer now, spent nine years in the army. While on deployment in 2019, his friend was killed. And something, he said, something inside of me broke and I, I have just been in a spiral of defeat and addiction ever since. He said, in this miserable state, I, I heard a podcast about Mighty Oaks and I applied and he makes his way to Tulsa and he comes into this week of ministry. He said, they asked him a question along the way. Do you want to be made well? It's the question that Jesus asked in John 5 of the man at the pool of Bethesda. And he said, I answered yes. And we listened to him testify of the power of grace that was happening in his life. And as I watched him, I thought, there's an example that past pain is not going to restrict the development of this man's potential because God is greater than our pain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Momentum. Here's the next one. I love this one. I believe that through Jesus Christ, my future is big, bright, and blessed. Say it with me. I believe that 
through Jesus Christ, my future is big, bright, and blessed. Read it with some passion. I believe that through Jesus Christ, my future is what? Thank you, Lord. Jabez, his origin story was one of pain, adversity. It was, it was such a difficult childhood and upbringing that he could have made excuses for the rest of his life. But he chose to pray, and he said to God, would you bless me? Would you place your hand on me? Would you expand my territory and keep me from pain? And God answered that prayer. And we see Jabez go on into a future that was big, that was bright, a future that was blessed. Hallelujah. Faith is the force that moves you forward from the past, the disappointment, the pain of the past. However, faith is also the confidence, here's number two, that gives us courage and strength today. When you're trying to move forward, you got to deal with the pressure you have right now. And faith has a power that is in this moment. Faith is a substance that is in this moment that puts a grit in my soul to press into what God has for me, into this faith in God, into the belief that things can change. Faith is the grit to press into that future that's bigger, brighter, and blessed. Faith is a substance. Yes, it's unseen, but it is an evidence in my heart. And it puts a conviction in me about how I approach today. God is bigger than my problem. God is going to help me with my problem. Here's the statement of faith. Whether it's a breakthrough or a walkthrough, I'm going to get through my problem. God is a God of breakthroughs. I believe in them. It's a miracle moment where something happens and it's not like it was. It, 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 it all changes. But he's also the God of miraculous walkthrough, like the miracle journey. It's the lady who was sick for 12 years. She did everything she knew to do. She hears Jesus is coming through her community. And I respect her for after 12 years still having the faith to get up to leave her home, to make her way. And even before she sees the crowd, she probably heard the crowd. When she sees the crowd, how will she get to Jesus? She had every reason to be defeated, to stay at home or to turn around and go back home. But there was a grit in her soul that caused her to press through. And she touched the hem of his garment. Jesus stopped the entire processional and he knew someone had touched him in faith. He identifies her. She says, it was me. And he says, go your way. Your faith Does, is faith a force that can move us forward. For her, for 12 years, she had been in this defeat, in this issue. But she never lost faith. And that faith in Jesus was so powerful that it brought healing. And, and I wonder how it was when she went back home that day. I have a friend that wrote a book about this situation. It was years ago. It was called Private Pain. Because that lady had a lot of private pain. In that culture, she would not have been allowed to worship with everybody else. And then in that condition even more restriction. She had spent all of her money looking for answers. How many times did she get her hopes up only to have those hopes dashed? 
And so she's there left with herself with a lot of private pain. I am so thankful to be able to tell you today that faith is a force that will move you forward even from private pain. I feel hope in this room. I feel help in this room. Because the, the issue is this, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you and I want you to have a stronger conviction that inspires, that motivates you, and that you find yourself moving forward by the power of God because your faith is in him. Here's a picture of John Maxwell, a great leader. One time an incredible pastor, God called him into the business arena where he has become the greatest influence on leadership in the history of the world. He has written more books and, and helped more companies than anyone else. Standing next to him is Mark Cole. Mark is the president and CEO of the six Maxwell companies that make up his enterprise. He is the one who is with John the most. If you ever watch a podcast, he's the one who is with him and conducting the interview. He's with him at all the events. And then he is casting strategic direction for the entire company. However, let me tell you his story. I had dinner with Mark a couple of months ago. I knew him, I just didn't know his story. I knew his title, but I didn't know him. He sat down with me and, and he started with a question. Ron, what's the, the most influential book of John that you've ever read? I told him and then I asked him the same question. He said, it's the one developing the leader within you. He said, Ron, I read it when I was 17 going on 18. And for the next 10, 11 years of my life, it, it, it shaped me. And he said, God was using me and I had gained a lot of momentum early in life and had great influence. But at age 30, I had a colossal failure. And he said, my failure resulted in my family falling apart, my influence. And he said, I was at the bottom. He said, someone told me, he goes, he goes I was needing a job. He said, I should apply with John Maxwell's company. He said, I applied. And he goes, 18 years ago, I showed up every day in the telecenter where my job was to call people and ask if they would be interested in, a, in attending one of his events. He said, I called everybody I knew and people that I didn't. And he said, I, I, was, I was having some, some good response. So I started getting promoted within the company. And he said, if you had told me 18 years ago, after the, that colossal failure, that I'd be sitting here talking to you as the president and CEO of the Maxwell Enterprise, I would have told you no way. He said, the pain in my life, the failure, how it restricted my thinking and how I thought my life will never be more than, and he said, I had these fixed boundaries of what I could ever do. And he said, here I am. And he said, Ron, faith is a force that will move you forward. That's where I got that point. And then right there in person, I see a guy like so many of us who can point back to times where we thought that's a showstopper. But God came with grace and our faith in Jesus has moved us forward. Is there anybody in the room you're like, I, I can't believe where I am right now. It's so awesome compared to where I was. Anybody, anybody? He said, my second, second book that's the most influential that John has written, he said, it came out the year I went to work in that telecenter. It's called Failure is Not Final. He said, this year he released what's called 2.0, some additional content. And he said, if you open it, you'll see that he dedicated it and he dedicated it to me because he told me he's seen the inner work of the Lord in me. He's seen me surrender to the work of the Lord and 
Ron, I'm just an example that failure is not final. I want to tell that to somebody again today. Your failure is not final. And I want to stand in a place of faith with and for you that a year from now and five years from now and 20 years from now, you will be amazed at where God has you. But today, the engines of faith need to fire. And it's time for you to take off in that direction. For Mark, it was a miracle journey. For you, it very well may be a miracle journey. It is time to align with the runway of faith and soar to that new place that God has for you. As I think about people who have overcome, I made a list of things that I see. They break through, they, they find grace for the shame, the pain, the problems, and they're moving forward and they see bigger possibilities. They have bigger goals. They attempt bigger things. They put in greater effort. They live with a gratitude, so they work hard. They demonstrate greater generosity. And when you hear generosity, you may think money. No, generosity is a spirit. They're, they're generous in how they think of other people. They don't write people off. They don't write people off who experience failure. They don't write people off who disagree with them. They don't write people off who have different values. They, they're so blessed that they're generous and they have this incredible circle of love and they end up making a difference. They expect greater results. I asked myself this question just this week. Has my faith in God who is real and my faith in his word, do I see change in me from one year ago? Do you see change as a result of your faith in Jesus and your faith in his word? Is there a, is there a difference now than a year ago? I want you to see bigger possibilities. We get to do this life one time. It's not a do-over. We don't get a dress rehearsal. We don't get a mulligan. This is it. And we have a God who created galaxies. A God who is, who is awesome. Nothing's too hard for him. Why would we think small? We will only think small if we allow the past to limit our thinking. But if we're informed by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to start seeing with the eyes of faith. It does not mean that life will be easy. It just means that like Joshua and Caleb, we've got a taste of the future. We have gone and gotten an idea that the future is better than anything we could imagine. And instead of being afraid and saying we can't, we will say we can because the promise of God is over us. And we will soar. Somebody catch fresh faith today. I, I want you to have bigger goals. I want you to attempt bigger things. I want you to put in greater efforts. Thank you, Lord. As the worship team comes today, I want us to find an application and then answer an altar call. How do you do it? My part, your part, is to have an active Christianity, an active spirituality, not a passive. You have a Bible, open it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So if you will get into the word, your part, the word gets into you and your faith gets stronger. You made a choice, an, you took an action step, you're here today. And you put yourself in an atmosphere that can inform, instruct, encourage, edify, convict, inspire, because it's the presence and the truth. 
I would encourage you, get around some people that have experienced grace and that are living in faith. Not every Christian is living in that kind of faith. Get around somebody that, that leaves you inspired. Get around somebody that makes you want to dream bigger and do more. Let that iron sharpen iron. Let that fire spread to your spirit. Get around those people. See, that's an action step. Step out in faith. What's God stirring you to do? Maybe it's something as simple as writing a note or sending a text of encouragement to someone or, or asking for forgiveness. Maybe it's going to lunch with somebody that you just know could speak into your life. You sit there and say, I want to learn. I want to learn. I want some help. Maybe it's being reminded that the very nature of the Holy Spirit is, is helper. And as you develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are walking in the help that is supernatural. No one wants you to achieve God's dream more than the one who gives you that dream. The Holy Spirit gives you the dream and then wants to empower you and help you to accomplish the dream. I want you to live a life where you say, I can't believe I get to do this. Mark looked at me and said, Ron, I can't believe I get to do this. I want you to live that way. I can't believe I get to do this. An action step, this is the last one. Practice gratitude. Gratitude, it's the practice of being aware of the goodness of God in this moment. Come on out here team and fill that in a bit. Because when you're hurting and you're defeated and you feel shame and remorse and regret, it is so easy to miss the moment. You bounce from what you did to its impact on what could have been. And you miss the moment. This moment where we can practice gratitude that God is good and God is faithful and we experience what God has in this moment. You know what fear is? Fear is anxiety where we are practicing what evil could do in our future. And so we live with apprehension, we live with skepticism, we live with what we perceive, how the shoe is gonna drop, and we miss the moment that in this moment, I can say, I praise you, Jesus. And if you'll put on the garment of praise, it will confront a spirit of defeat. What's, what, I love the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I, I preached this message twice now. This is number three and I feel an inspiration. The spirit of heaviness, the gravity, What's the force that allow you to soar when you've been weighed down? It's faith in Jesus. What activates faith? Practice gratitude. I'm breathing. I have life. Let everything that has breath, just turn that breath back to praise. Oh. Do you have some things that could make a list that are the blessings of God in your life? How about Job? He's lost everything. His wife said, if I'm you, I'm cursing God. You should curse God. 
I mean, it was as negative. He's physically sick. He's in anguish. He's lost his, his family. He's lost his money. And Job do something that I want to learn. And that is gratitude isn't based on what I have. The coming and the going of life. He said, naked I came, naked I'll go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He practiced gratitude. And then what did God do? God restored double, didn't he? He restored to him double everything but the number of kids. Have you ever noticed that? And you'll have like, thank God, no. No, the point is, the point is he never lost his kids. They were in heaven. So only had to give him the exact number because he still had them. It just was going to be a minute before he could see them again. Because God doesn't lose. God doesn't fail. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't miss it. So why don't we praise him? Why don't we give him glory? Why don't we practice gratitude and experience what God has in this moment? Are you with me, church? Would you stand with me today? Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With your eyes closed in the presence of God, here's the altar call. If you say, I need to get over some stuff, I need the faith in Jesus to move me forward. Uh, I'm gonna accept this word, it's that forceful. And I want you to come to this altar when I give the altar call. Secondly, somebody needs to see bigger possibilities, make bigger goals, attempt bigger things. There's no reason for you not to. Do not talk yourself out of it. Don't let, let anything limit your faith in God. You say, that, that's the part I needed. I want you to come. Thirdly, there are people in the room, your faith is being tested. Not a test like you get in school, an answer sheet, fill in the answers. No, test as in like, a car they're getting ready for market and they're putting it through all kind of stress, testing the integrity, quality, and strength. Is it ready for the future? Some of you are experiencing a test of your faith and there's more pressure on you right now than you can remember. And you are in a refiner's fire and the Lord told me to tell you, you're coming forth. That's the runway. You're gonna take off. You're coming forth. And if you say, I need a deposit of faith today because the test is so hard, then as we sing, if you are in one of those three groups, I want you to come. We're gonna declare he's a way maker. Would you sing it? And would you come if that's you?